cats and kittens. Today, a sick Beck is going to talk to you guys about our alternate watercolor techniques. This is fairly uh, well covered stuff. These are like sort of special effects techniques or the sort of stuff you wouldn't want to do every day or might not be archival. But if you're doing watercolor comics or specific watercolor illustrations, they might be things you do want to try. So today we're going to be talking about wax resist. We're going to be talking about salt. We're going to be talking about spilling the salt all over your table. We're going to be talking about rubbing alcohol and we're going to be talking about um, cling wrap, saran wrap, this sort of stuff. So the materials you guys are gonna need to follow along with this quick tutorial are rubbing alcohol, salt, I'm using kosher salt here. The different types of salt you use will give you different effects. Your watercolors and your cling wrap and wax crayons or candles. Um, I'm using clear watercolor wax crayons here. You can use regular Crayola crayons if you want to. Um, you can also use a, a, a candle if you want to do that as well, you don't have to go out and spend money. These are some of the most inexpensive, low cost techniques that you are going to be able to do. And they can be really fun and they can add a lot to your work. And if I can find it. Oh, no. Never mind. I was also going to show you guys a spray technique, but I have scavenged that spray bottle for. Um, Yes. So um, you can also do like spray techniques with watercolor. This is actually just Tattered Angels, which is like a crafter slash stamper, water-based, dye-based spray with some mica powder in it. You can make this at home for like nothing, but I got it at TJ Morning for cheaper than I can make it. So I made it, but you can make something similar with an empty spray bottle, some water, some watercolor paint or dye-based paint. Um, and then if you want, you can add in some like, um, Perlex powder to make it or uh, fine powdered mica powder for spray effects and I've covered that in other videos So I'm not gonna really go to a lot of trouble covering it today We're also gonna grab some brushes and a cup of water. So I will be right back So we're using a uh, block bound fluid cellulose based watercolor paper You can do these sort of techniques. I believe on pretty much any kind of paper watercolor paper specifically, of course um it may perform better on hot press. Some of them may provide per, work better on uh, cotton rag paper. Some might work better. Um, yeah. So it's sort of like a, your mileage may vary. And we're going to, we're going to do a color that has a lot to offer. And I'm going to move the camera over. Dripping salt all over the place. And I'm grabbing the Jello um, Marine Blue, which is a beautiful blue. And we're going to need to get some coverage. And we're going to start with the salt. And the salt works best on a paper that isn't overly saturated. So if you have paper towels handy, you're going to want to soap up, sop up this excess paint. And we're going to do that with something called a thirsty brush, which is when you clean your brush and you dry it out on a paper towel. And then you just soak up that excess water very carefully. And I don't really care if I disrupt how the paint went down on here, but you might care. So you might want to be more gentle than that. And then you just sprinkle your salt into your not sopping wet, but still damp paper. And this might work better on a paper that um, isn't overly thirsty, but can retain your water for a while. We're actually getting a decent effect here, but it's not super great and it's not as extreme. And let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And this might actually be worth it for me to grab um, a cotton rag paper. I hate wasting cotton rag papers on like just quick demonstrations because they are more expensive but sometimes it's necessary because sometimes it's the only way we can see what's actually going on so i'm gonna go grab a piece of fabriano cotton rag paper and i'll be right back we've got a piece of fabriano cotton rag paper and normally i would go to the effort of stretching this but frankly scarlet my dear i just don't so we're gonna Go ahead and get some pigment here on the paper. And just a little background on me while we do this. I am a watercolor comic artist. I've been doing watercolor comics for 
maybe six years now, five to six years now. I started in 2011. And you can check out my work at 7inchcara.com. And it's free to read webcomics. So we've got a lot of buckling, which is going to affect how our salt goes down. And we want to work quick because this paper, as it buckles, is absorbing the water. So we're probably going to get a better reaction in the areas where, and I'm not even being that careful. You can like just dump your salt down or you can like carefully sprinkle it like a salt fairy. And you want to wait until the paper fully dries before we remove our salt. You know, just like in real life, gotta let those tear dry, tears dry before we can remove life's salt. I know, I'm just so witty. Getting a little better reaction here on that fluid paper. Gonna set it aside. We're going to next do um, a trick, sort of, with the cling wrap slash saran wrap slash whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna prep it ahead of time because, you know, I was a Girl Scout, be prepared. And set that aside on my glass tabletop where you guys can't even see it. We use the same color, Magello Marine Blue, just because we're really getting a nice contrast and I really enjoy contrast in my life. This is another one that for best effect, you have to let it dry. So we're gonna slop it on in there. Yes, just like that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then we're gonna smoosh like that. And we're gonna let it dry. So I will check in with you guys once this is dry, but this can be useful for sort of watery textures. And then I need to find somewhere to put this so we can move on to rubbing alcohol. And that means I need to grab or find, beg, borrow, or steal another watercolor pad and I normally have like a majillion of them and yet when I need them I can't find them. Here's another six by six. It's kind of a waste to use a six by six um, for one technique so we're gonna do two. We're gonna do alcohol drops and we're gonna do wax resist and wax resist is one of the ones where you apply it first and I covered this a little more in depth in another video so we're just gonna use our wax crayon we're gonna Draw some lines and oh, they're invisible with this invisible wax crayon. And then gonna really goop it on so you guys can see the magic of wax resist. And it's one of those techniques, unlike say masking fluid or frisket, which I also have covered quite a few times on this channel. Um, it's one of those techniques that you apply it first and then you can't you can't remove it after. So once it's on your paper, it's on your paper. I've heard people, heard of, I've not seen evidence, but maybe you guys can link me to some evidence. I've heard people say that you can um, remove it with a hairdryer, but uh, yes, I don't know about that. So we're gonna use a thirsty brush, just like I showed you guys, remove some of this pooled water. You can do that more carefully than I'm doing it but this is for demonstration purposes, so I don't really care all that much. And we've got a spray bottle. What we're gonna do, we're gonna drop it in. You guys can see, we get a really interesting effect because the rubbing alcohol repels that water. And you can also get an effect by spraying it on, but I don't really wanna do that since I'm working on a small space and it's gonna cause some trouble for me in terms of cleanup. So I am going to let all of these dry and then I'll check in with you when they are dry and ready. So I'll see you guys in several hours. All right, guys, so not everything has had a chance to dry, but the three on my tabletop have. You guys can see the effect you get from dripping rubbing alcohol onto your still wet watercolor paper and there's your wax resist. Here is the salt on cellulose based paper. Nice sort of a star or snowflake sort of effect. And this is it on the cotton rag paper. Still there, but not as um, apparent, but that's also because this paper started to buckle. So anything in the middle didn't really stay wet. 
Um, so something to keep in mind with the salt and the rubbing alcohol is you really want this to be your last layer because anything you paint on top of it, you're gonna lose those effects really fast. And more rubbing alcohol, more salt does not necessarily make it work better. And I can do a demonstration, actually that might be a good idea to do a demonstration for you guys since these are dry. And if it's okay with you guys, I'm just going to do it all on the same sheet of paper, save myself some money. And I'm just gonna do salt and rubbing alcohol. I'm not gonna do wax resist or, um, oh, but you can, with the wax resist, you can do that in layers. And I might demonstrate that next. So I'm gonna, I wanna use two really disparate colors. So I'm going to activate an opera rose. And I'm also, or maybe even three, we're gonna do a bunch of colors. Um, also activate a Windsor Newton Green Gold and then that Magello Marine. You give those a chance to activate. All right, so with our first layer, since it's already activated, we're gonna go in with that beautiful Magello Marine Blue and we're using fluid, not fluid 100, but fluid, so cellulose paper, fluid 100 cold press. So it's got a bit of a texture to it. I was really surprised I've been doing Twitter chats about watercolor lately and everybody I know uses hot press and loves it. And I am not a hot press fan personally. I like the texture. I like when the paper sort of speckled, let me zoom in and show you guys, sort of speckles and breaks up like that. I really like that texture. I just, I really enjoy working on cold press. And uh, so I was surprised that so many people really like hot press instead. So. We're gonna use that thirsty brush and just soak up some of the excess. Remember, we don't want this all the way dry, but it being pooled is not necessarily helpful. And we're gonna start with some salt. And you're gonna get a better reaction in the areas that are more thickly applied because it can create more contrast. And then we're gonna drip some rubbing alcohol. Also very pretty. Maybe I don't play with these techniques enough. And then the magic is we need to let that dry. So while we're letting that dry, just gonna scooch it on over. And then we're gonna do the wax resist layering. So I'm just gonna do a cross hatch pattern. This is all for demonstration and it's all got dry times. So I have to be a patient gal. Let's, let's do a gradiated wash here. So we're adding more water as we bring our paint across the page. And this is a very lazy <laughs> gradiated wash. All right, so gonna let both of those dry and I'm gonna go change the water in the cup and apparently I got off camera a little bit that's what that looks like so I've got a cup of water clean water of course and I've also got my old master soap and I've got a much larger synthetic that I dare not uh, show you guys until I'm ready so I am soaping up the synthetic opening up my masking fluid and getting nice big Oh, it just wants to do little ones, come on. Move, lay cat hair. And get masking, frisk it everywhere. But hopefully this will work out and it'll be worth it. Come on, I want some big, there we go. Yeah, I want some bigger droplets than that. And if I ever am working on a piece on camera and you guys are like, oh, I love that, I want it for myself, you can always shoot me an email and let me know. It doesn't have to be an at con sale. So I'm gonna let that dry and quickly recap my masking fluid. Then I'm gonna go into it with the wax resist. So we're gonna end up with sort of a combo experiment that I hope turns out really cool, but it could fail because that totally happens when you're flying without a script. 
All right, guys, so our Sidon has, well, the splatter effect in the background has dried. So we are going to do something interesting and maybe different. We're going to apply, I'm gonna try to be super careful going around. It's gonna be hard for me because I can't really see. I usually rely on like the reflection from the light but I have two cameras, two cameras blocking my view. So I can't all exactly see where the water is going down, but we are preparing for a cruise. I mean a wash. And I did not do the wax resist. I guess I forgot. Nah, I, I thought it might interfere with all the masking fluid I've flicked down. So rather than risk it, risk it with the frisket, I'll just work around it. Okay. All right. I have to re-wet some areas. Okay, come on, come on. And this is a lock-bound pad. Work quick. Here's some turquoise. It did not have any in it. Ha ha ha. And goofed. And then we have some ultramarine. Oh, I just realized I didn't get any in that space up there. So it's gonna. Of course. Of course. It's okay. It's okay. And then we're going to pull out the cling wrap off camera because it's just how we roll. And we're going to. And then we're going to get some more. And we're going to do that up here. And then it has to dry with the saran wrap on. That is an important, important phase in this illustration. And that's probably going to take longer because it has to evaporate from underneath. But in order to get that sort of like wave underwater texture, you got to be patient. So let's cross our fingers. All right, guys. So these have pretty much dried. I'm going to brush off the, the salt and then we're going to go and attempt another layer. All right, guys, so with the salt, I had to scrape a lot of it off with my fingernail and there's still some salt on there. I can hold it up to the camera for you guys. We're gonna do another layer with the salt and with the alcohol. We're gonna do another layer as well here with just the wax resist. So with the wax, we're gonna do alternating stripes now. And this is just to demonstrate some uses for this sort of a technique. And then we're gonna grab some opera rose. We're gonna start from this end and we're just gonna do the same thing. And you guys can see how the wax resist has sort of protected that other layer. So you get just that blue. Actually do a little more pink in there like that. And we're gonna set this aside to let it dry. And we're gonna move on over here to our interesting experiment. And I'll start with the rubbing alcohol over here. And some of that Magello might get reactivated. Worry about that later. Or not at all, since this is just an experiment. All right, so let's get some more pink on there. And I want to soak up any pooling because we want it to be damp, not soaking wet. And I kind of just slopped it on there, trying to get it down quick. And we're going to start with the salt. And we'll actually do the salt over here and over here where the pink is a little more noticeable. For all we know, we might get some really interesting effects out of this. Then we're going to use our rubbing alcohol. 
Definitely getting some movement with this. And again, so we got a lot of pooling down there. Let's see if we can get some of that up. Maybe do a little more salt, sort of around the rubbing alcohol. And we're gonna let that dry. And then our final layer is going to be with the Windsor and Newton Green Gold. Hey guys, so I think our Saran Wrap initial test is dry. Ooh, look at that. Really got some interesting texture there. I do see that some of those areas are still wet um, and probably would have remained wet until morning. So I'm just going to, and you can tell because they're a little shiny. I'm just gonna set this aside and let it dry all the way out. But I really like that texture. It's really neat, especially some of the modeling going on in there. And then, with a little bit of cleanup, we'll be ready to remove the saran wrap from that side on watercolor I've been working on soon. Um, I'm still waiting for these two and grab the other to fully dry so we can do our third and final layer. You can see how this is getting a little muddy. There are some interesting effects going on, especially some interesting negative effect, negative space effects. It almost looks like jellyfish, which is really cool. I'm, I'm so tempted to leave this at just two layers and tighten this up into jellyfish. Um, I'm gonna have to think about that because for this, I've kind of already demonstrated what I wanna demonstrate. And there's not really any point to doing a final layer, but a final layer might end up looking really cool. I'll think about it and let you guys know. All right, guys, so this has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go knock the salt off of this and then I think I'm finished with it. I think I wanna turn it into a jellyfish painting. So I hope you guys will keep watching this channel to see me do that. And then I'm gonna add one more layer on top of this and then we're gonna take another look at that side-on piece I'm working on. All right, I'm gonna have to pick off the individual salt grains, which is, I mean, it is its own sort of thing, but this is pretty much finished for now. Let's go ahead and get cracking on this. So where I applied the rose pink, it ended up pooling and it's um, it's dry, but you see that sheen to it? That's all the glycerin that they use in that paint. So I guess Soho has a fair amount of glycerin. And next we're going to, I'm gonna do little wax resist circles in all of these diamonds. And then we're gonna do a layer of Windsor Newton olive green gold. And of course it wouldn't help in this instance if I was using a colored wax because then I better see what I'm doing. Usually what I do is I look for the light reflection off of my wax since wax is a little shiny. All right, then we're just gonna grab a great big old brush full of Windsor Newton green gold. And we're gonna start heavy at the top, I think. And then that's gonna need an opportunity to dry, but I think the three color gradations make for a pretty interesting effect, especially that green gold. Now you see where the wax is, it also will create sort of pooling in certain areas because it's a boundary between the other areas. So with wax resist, you can actually apply a lot of color to an area and help prevent it from seeping into other areas. But like I said earlier, wax resist, um, you can't remove it once it's done. So you might wanna use like masking fluid for that kind of a technique. So we're gonna clean this up and take a look at Sidon. So, just going to peel it back like that. Some of those areas that were covered are still visibly damp, but we got kind of a cool pool effect, which is neat. Now, there's also some areas where the paint got pushed into the character. Um, I'm gonna let it fully dry overnight and I will deal with some of those errors tomorrow. So as you guys can see, it seems that brusho plus cellophane makes for a neat technique. Um, you get the cellophane blended some of the colors together so you don't get as much of the interesting sort of starburst effect that you would get if you had just done the, the brusho plane. Um, 
but it's fun to play around with new techniques and to learn how to solve problems or create your own new problems. And it's fun to experiment. So I encourage you guys to do some experimenting of your own. And there's plenty of videos on this channel to give you inspiration in your experimentations. Please don't be a coward. Please try new things. I strongly encourage you guys to go outside your comfort zone and take a risk. Um, it's this sort of play and experimentation that leads to bold new ideas and finding new methods that work for you and breakthroughs. So I'm not quite ready to sign out because I'm going to check in with you guys one more time when that wax resist piece dries. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope I've shown you guys some techniques that maybe you would not have tried. All right, so Sidon's going to be interesting because I did something very different with his technique. And we're gonna be learning as we go. And we're probably gonna be dealing with some really dark colors. And he is red and kind of like a Caucasian flesh sort of a color. So we need to activate this blue and get it soaked up as quick as possible because we don't want it to stain the paper. And since this is a large piece, I can't trust myself to be able to work quick enough. So I'm just going to do it as I go and try to get a lot of that color up. And I'm going to be painting him with my Sakura Koi field set. And I actually reviewed that set recently for you guys. So if you're looking for an affordable watercolor set that won't break the bank and actually works well, you can check that out. And I have some other recommendations um, as Storyfy stories because I have been doing these really large Twitter threads about watercolor every day for the past week. Just really trying to help people, but also drum up some interest for the other help things I do. And of course, the blue being as pervasive as it is, it's not the end of the world um, if I can't get all of it up because it will probably just contribute to him looking like he's underwater. So not the worst problem to have. I think we could really do some fun things with those cellophane techniques. Try to spread some of that color a little further in so it doesn't look so um, sort of jarring because the cellophane sort of kept some areas from actually getting any paint. Just use this to also sort of pre-tone this image. And what that is, is I am in certain areas picking up some of the colors from the background and adding them here to the foreground image, helping him sort of fit the environment a little bit better. This is a trick slash technique that I really enjoy doing. All right, and then we need to let this dry. So I'm going to step away from it overnight and I'm going to finish it off camera or mostly off camera. So thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out with me. So um, I'm going to check in one last time on this video. This has mostly had a chance to dry. You can see how the different layers of wax resist protected different layers of glazing. Um, what's kind of surprising is the pink isn't as intense. Uh, the the um, olive green, the green gold, I'm sorry, sort of covered up some of that wax. So it looks like the green was the wax resist rather than the opera pink. But wax resist is a super, super easy to master technique. Very, very affordable. It doesn't require a lot of materials and it doesn't really require a lot of ability to be able to achieve some interesting effects. So I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of little technique intro, uh, intensive. 
I hope you guys will head on over to natosuit.blogspot.com for even more watercolor goodness. And I hope you'll consider following me on Instagram at natosuit, where I share my watercolor art almost every single day. And make sure you check out 7-Inch Kara, my watercolor comic, at 7inchkara.com. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something. If you've got any suggestions, questions, or comments, let me know below in the comments section. And if you'd like to see a particular topic covered, let me know that as well, and I'll try to get to it. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys.